Hey guys, it's Joel from Sinoid again on um, doing another beginner's tutorial uh, explaining uh, Massive. And uh, in this tutorial today, we're going to focus on the modulating oscillator, uh, the modulation oscillator. Um, so, um, yeah, just uh, make sure that this oscillator, this first oscillator is on and it's on. Uh, set to uh, any sound you'd like and uh, we're gonna take a look at what uh, the modulation oscillator does to oscillator one so um, to start off um, the most commonly uh, used uh, at least for me personally the most common uh, feature I use on the modulation oscillator is the phase modulation and as you can see uh, this is how a sawtooth sound wave sounds like, and this is how it sounds like with some phase. So, um, what exactly is this uh, phase modulation uh, doing to the sound? Well, uh, to be quite, to I guess get a little technical on you guys, I'm going to kind of show you... Um, I'm going to show you with a sine wave. Um, and I'm going to show... Oh, it seems like something's going on. That's why I didn't choose. There we go. So yeah, this is a sine wave. And I want to show you guys on here. This is uh, the EQ8 uh, graphic uh, equalizer. This is uh, a sine wave at roughly 200, like 178, 277 hertz exactly. Um, you can't really hear it so yeah this is like 200 so in phase if you if you I have my massive off the screen right now um if we were to add the modulation oscillator if we were to just increase the phase and apply it to the sine wave suddenly you can see these harmonics being created and if we remove uh, well, if we remove the phase it becomes a whole tone again with no harmonics suddenly the harmonics upper harmonics so how does this happen well the way phase modulation works is I'll show you right here in a little I got for you guys. This is our sine wave, basic sine wave, and this is what they call the carrier signal. And then we have the modulating sine wave signal. So what the modulation oscillator does is that it actually uses this waveform to modulate the carrier signal and reproduces phase modulated signal. So uh, when it inputs this sine wave what happens is that whenever the sine wave goes positive of zero, this is zero, whenever it goes positive of zero, it, it compresses, uh, it's, it, it causes uh, a higher rate of frequency, and then when it starts decreasing and goes negative, it'll decrease in frequency, and then increase, and then decrease, and then increase. And essentially, if you see how it increases, decreases, increases, decreases, you can actually see how, how that uh, is illustrated on on this uh, on this uh, spectrum analyzer, this the EQ. Uh, see how we can listen to those upper uh, harmonics, and then the more we phase it, the more harmonics are created. If we decrease the phase. 
you it becomes a whole tone again. So a sine wave really represents this quite well because it's it's a very natural waveform, very basic waveform. But this is what happens in every single sound. And then no matter what sound I put in here, uh, let's just use uh, Flenders. If we add some phase to that, suddenly you can see all these little tiny uh, upper harmonics are created due to the phase modulation. And that's because a sine wave is actually being used to modulate it. And, and this is very common in creating a nasty sounds you go. Look how many, just look at how many upper frequencies are created in a bass note for Flenders. It's unfazed. There's nothing there, there's hardly anything there. Phase it, suddenly becomes alive. So, uh, that's phase modulation. And, um, if you can also, you can also tell, uh, Let's go back to a sine wave again, and um, just to show you guys, uh, I don't really know. This is okay. So we have this sine wave. We're gonna phase it all the way up, and then we're gonna go here and turn up the position of it. This further creates upper harmonics. Very lightly, uh, this position knob. Uh, um, it, I mean, from what I I tried doing some research on it. Uh, from what I get is that it is actually um, enables you to move the position of either the the phase modulated signal or the carrier signal. It uh, it allows you to to move it so that there's more phase cancellation in between the frequencies and. And essentially, it'll, it'll just kind of um, create those upper harmonics. So, I mean, it, it, it just does very subtle, uh, creates like subtle higher harmonics. I mean, from what you saw in the uh, spectrum analyzer. So, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the ring modulator. Um, there's really nothing that happens hardly anything it's a very um, very subtle effect however if let's try and pitch this to something that's harmonic it's suddenly a uh, creates it's 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 very much more dynamic let's try a fifth now this is a sine wave let's if we were to actually use something different it becomes much more interesting it, it does has that ringing a bell effect and th and that's kind of what, what they were going for what um I'm not gonna get too technical with ringing modulation because it can get it can get very uh yeah I mean uh square waves work really well with that and if you get a very inharmonic with it make really cool effects so that's ring modulation and then frequency mod, um, filter uh, frequency modulation actually uh, uses a filter to create uh, to create uh, cool effects uh, let's just use a daft let's get the resonance out of there As you can see, it's very subtle, but if you were to actually take out some of the cutoff. Yeah.
Yeah, it can get kind of nasty, and that's because I have it at six right now. I didn't notice that, but. Kind of odd because if you, yeah, if you check that out, I have a low pass on it. But if you add the filter frequency modulator, suddenly that signal creates some upper harmonics here, higher frequency harmonics. So, and then of course you can choose between filter one and two. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, personally, I like to do this. Uh, I'll, let's say, let's just, I guess, work with a, uh, oh yeah. Let's work with a square. Yeah, you can see all that going on. Uh, really highly phased, yeah, all phased uh, square. Yeah, it becomes alive. And then um let's pitch this. Let's pitch a uh, one octave above. It sounds hollow and that's that's a the inherent nature of square wave. It tends to sound hollow. So um that's it this is a phase uh, modulated a, an entire octave above the carrier signal. So what would you happen if, like, for example, you would uh, go to like 19? Why did I pick 19? Well, 12 is an octave, and if you go a fifth above an octave, it's actually 19. Um, an entire scale from from like let's say C to C is actually 12 notes. There's 12 notes, so. Uh, if you go for 12 notes and then you go seven notes above, that would be a fifth in a scale, in a key scale. So there's 12 notes in an octave, uh, but there's only eight notes in a scale. Uh, I don't know how well your music theory is, guys, but I mean, I highly suggest um, brushing up on some on your scales and notes and all that good stuff. It really does help. Um, understanding why these numbers make sense. So um, maybe if you guys request, I'll do a tutorial, a small tutorial on music theory using the piano rule and all that. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, if you, I highly suggest learning that, and it'll really help in in learning why these uh, numbers and the pitches um, matter and correlate in, in the end. Um, moving this around tends the cents. These last two digits are called cents. Um, they're just a fine grain tuning of uh, the pitches, and sometimes you, you you can even see how it naturally oscillates. Kind of cool, right? Yeah. So experiment with that, guys. And um, this concludes a tutorial on phase and uh, phase modulation, ring modulation, and all these uh, cool modes within the modulation oscillator. Um, it it's it's really it actually adds a lot of character to your sound um, when used correctly. I highly I, I almost always love to use phasing in, in, in my sounds when they when the sounds uh, work well with it. It's great. I love it. So um, I hope this helped. Uh, thank you guys once again for the following and I, I really do enjoy giving these tutorials to you guys. Um, make sure if you have any requests to reach out to us on Instagram by posting a comment. Uh, on our Instagram we have our email set up there. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to put the email on the bottom in the description as well. Uh, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, show us some love on SoundCloud. Uh, and yeah. All right, guys. Have a good one.